containment around the world. Today we're talking about containment and containment engineering, especially in the Indian and Bangladesh market, but also around the world. And welcome to my blog and here. Welcome my guests here, Anwar Zinga. He's from Glad India Engineering in uh, Delhi. And uh, hello, Hubert, Hubert Rassi is from Glad Engineering Weimar. And we all three, we have a world of engineering and a world of, of uh, containment uh, uh, that we would share with you. Go on now, Anuvrat, how is that for you? You're especially in the Indian market in Bangladesh, I said. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah. And, and what's your experience with, uh, with uh, containment? Is the Indian tiger now looking for highly active production? Michael, now the paradigm is shifting, but earlier it was a pussycat 10 years back. And the moment you used to work, use the word containment, people used to think risk, spacesuits, money. Yeah. But now, fast forward to 2021, 2022 now, thanks to innovation by companies, OEMs, mm. it's changing. People are thinking, yes, it is manageable. It is not that expensive and it is not that difficult to manufacture these products in a seamless manner. Yeah. So we now see a push, especially in the Asian subcontinent, to have these containment facilities up and running because the need of the hour for the local public, the local population is there. They used to heavily rely on medicines from other manufacturers, but now India, Bangladesh, and even Southeast Asia wants to be uh, self-sufficient in these yeah. high, uh, let's say, uh, value products. And, and it's a growing market and manageable. This is a keyword from my, uh, from my point of view. Uh, the, the process, now we are learning that it's manageable and it's not that we always have to wear the full moon suit. To, to, to be dressed up correctly, working with uh, highly active products. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, with good engineering practices and good design, we are able to mitigate a lot of risk for our uh, clients, for our partners, and that is what they are now appreciating. Yeah, that's very good. And, and Hubert, how is that for you? You're, you're around the world, as said. What's your experience in highly active production, contained uh, production? Well, indeed, we are doing projects around the world. It's not only in, in India or in Europe, although it seems that containment somehow or the, the requirement and the uh, technology is highly focused in Europe. But all over the world, the, the question is the mm -hmm. same. We have to protect our employees yeah. and we should protect them as if they would be our own children. That's yeah. what, what it is about. Our first a uh, containment project um, was together with Glad India Engineering in Uzbekistan, very far away, but it was also with contained products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have done projects in Africa, we have done projects in Southeast Asia, Middle East. and in Middle, Middle East. East. Um, so there's a lot of... Septic projects as well as oral dosage forms. No. So the requirement is everywhere and the tendency, uh, in my opinion, is more and more towards highly sophisticated, high-tech products, which are rather uh, having a containment requirement um, than uh, standard products. Yeah, yeah. And I would also say it's not only prote uh, um, protection of the operators, that they are not medicated with, uh, with the highly active products. It's also protection of the next product on this machine. If it's not a mono product uh, that's produced there, then it's a lot of many of, of, of products which are produced there. And their cross-contamination is a big issue. And containment does not only mean my operators are protected, it means the patient is protected, that he's just getting the medicine that he requires and not the one that the other one for the other pill requires. Sure, these are the two main aspects in mm -hmm. containment, which we have the GMP requirement, cross-contamination and protecting our personnel. Yeah, 
But Michael, a good point there, what which you made or raised is most of our clients now are asking for multi-product facilities. Yeah. They don't want a mono product facility because it's not able to generate yeah. that much revenue yeah. for them. So they want to have a flexible solution that okay for they have a campaign base, they produce product A, B in one week and then C and D, and then they keep changing or maybe have two or three products at the same time. So that is now the need of the R, and that is what they ask us when we design the facilities for them. Yeah. How can we manage multi-product, avoid cross-contamination, safeguard the operator, safeguard the environment, yeah. and still have a robust solution that can stand the test of time? That, that's really the issue now. And and well, in Europe, we had with uh, with the the, the <coughs> shared facilities uh, that was five years, seven years ago. Uh, uh, the, the, there was a rule that uh, that uh, when you're producing highly active uh, products in shared facilities, you have to take care of the PDE, they said, the, the uh, maximum dose per day, mm -hmm. not only for the operator, but also for the equipment and for the next uh, um, tablet and the next product. Uh, in, indeed, companies have the tendency to overdo in, in this respect. Mm. Uh, because the fear is always there, oh, I have a toxic product, uh, better I have a dedicated facility, but we can produce factories for each product. Yeah. We, we have to share facilities yeah. and we have to have the ways and they are there. There are very clear procedures how to define the project mm -hmm. product and how to define the containment requirements. So we should take use of that instead of just building dedicated factories. Yeah, that's correct. You see, it's a very interesting topic that we have, containment in pharmaceutical industries and pharmaceutical production. But for today, we're finished, and next week, we will go on with our discussion. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned. <laughs>